you got it. I know it was in a different language, but hopefully the wording kind of uh, clued you in to what was happening. Uh, for those that wasn't paying attention, uh, the kid that was uh, given the bag with the medicine in the soup to take home to his sick mother, he became a doctor later and paid off that uh, older man's bill. So it's thinking outside of self. And that's what our Lord does for us. He pays the debt in full. When we think about what we've done and all the sins that we've done, he took the bill and he nailed it to the cross. So that's what we should be about. And that's what this message is. Such a confirmation this morning that uh, Minister Dredd read uh, the second chapter of Philippians. And that's where I'll be coming from today. So before we go into the word, let us say a prayer. Let's look to the Lord at this time. Father God, I thank you this morning for you being God on the throne and you being a loving God. Thank you, God, for forgiving us for our sins, blotting out our transgressions, knowing, oh God, that we couldn't do it without you. We need you. So, Father, I ask you right now that you would just uh, use me. I ask that you would decrease me and that you would increase in me and speak through me. Use me as your vessel that I may say that which you would want me to say. So I thank you this morning in advance and I ask it all in Jesus' name. And all the saints of God said amen. 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 So again, it was a confirmation. Uh, Minister Dredd came here and read the second chapter of Philippians, and of all the books, the 66, he went right there. And I said, Lord, you just show me. Anytime I bring a message, I ask God to give me the message to present. I just want to do your will. So if you have your Bibles, go over to the second, uh, second chapter of Philippians, and it's going to begin at verse 1, right where we read earlier. We're just going to go over it again, read a little extra to it. And the text reads thus, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation and took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also has, excuse me, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at, that at that name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth, things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You may be seated. Amen. That's a confirmation. God is so good. I want to just put a title on this, Christ-like humility. Christ-like humility. In these passages of Scripture here, it basically tells us that we ought to think outside of ourselves. Think of the other person first. It should be a big God, a medium-sized others, and a small me. A big God, a medium-sized other folk, and a small me. The other one should be thought of first, but first God before those. And after love, humility, when we read these passages, love is the first thing 
that God wants us to do. Jesus said the commandment, first commandment he wanted us to have is love. Then there was humility, and it's the most discussed virtue in this New Testament. When you read throughout the New Testament, you'll find that, that other virtue is talking about humility. And many Bible sp verses speak of humility, but the Philippians makes a tremendous contribution here when we deal with this particular book here. It's growing in humility. How many want to grow in humility? It's kind of hard when you read through this that we, have mu we must first become a slave. If we want to have the mindset of Jesus Christ, we must adapt to becoming a slave. That's kind of challenging. Then when we read in here, we also examine these Philippians. We find that verses 1 and 2 of this same chapter reminds us that the Holy Spirit works in believers to produce unity. We have to have him to give us that unity in the body. See, and it works well when we trust God to do that. But he, uh, when we look at this, he tells us to count other folks more significant than ourselves. Everybody else should matter more than we are, whether we like them, don't like them, whether they're an enemy or what we should think of them first. Because that's what Jesus demonstrated to us. We know that Jesus was God, but he gave up that position to follow the assignment God had placed on him. See, we look at Paul. He says here in verse 2, be like-minded, Christ was. He says, have the same love as Christ, of one accord as Christ, of one mind as Christ. So in other words, when we look at this, we are to look like Christ did. If you remember Christ, when he was nailed to the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. So we've got to put ourselves in that same mindset that Christ put himself in. Love regardless of what you think. It's not what we think, but it's what God thinks that matters. See, Jesus is the ultimate example of humility. We look at these passages again here in verses uh, 5 through 8 here in chapter 2. Paul tells us to have the mind among yourselves which in our Lord demonstrated. Though he was in the form of God, he didn't consider himself equally. He took on the form of a servant, as I said earlier. He didn't count himself equally with God. He didn't grasp saying, this is mine, but he emptied himself of who he was on high. And a marriage relationship is kind of hard for us men we, we, we like to read that verse in Ephesians 5 and 22 where the women are told to submit. Or we could boldly say it, submit. But they really don't realize they're submitting to one that emptied himself. He becomes one that died to his selfish desires. And that's the blessing. And when we do that, we're doing the will of God. It's not about our will, but it's about God's will. And that's what it says here. And, and, and we look at this here, these passages. Here is the creator of the universe, Jesus Christ, submitting. Submitting. Even to the point of washing the disciples' feet. Submitting. Submitting. He took a step down from that heavenly place. And we got to demonstrate that same attitude humility. See, here the, the creator of the universe gave himself up. He put a towel around his waist. Can you imagine God putting a towel around his waist to wash those disciples' feet, the ones that were fishermen and all these others, tax collectors, the most hated folks at that time, to wash their feet. And things work better when we do it God's way. Because the Bible says that he will exalt those who humble themselves. And those that put themselves up, he will take them down. God wants us to have a rid of the prideful mentality. And he wants us to have this humility. We need to have that Christ-like humility. 
See, Jesus shows us what humility looks like. So when, he, when we look at these Philippians here, in verse 1, Paul deals with encouragement. If we have Christ living in us, we should do nothing out of selfish motive. Nothing out of selfish motive. I heard a man say, yeah, my wife is always first after me. And I heard another man said one time, he said, yeah, you know what? Uh, I bought two free, I got two free round trip tickets to Hawaii. I went twice. Huh? Don't you got a wife? Yeah, that's why I went twice. She needs to stay home and take care of the house. She just better submit unto me. It's not the right attitude. God wants us to be leader servants as men or servant leaders as men in our household. We should be the ones opening doors. I seen one time a, a woman walks up, pulls the door, the man walks in and goes and takes a seat. And I said, what is going on here? And I said, well, I better stay, I'll stay out of their business. I'm going to just pray for them. Another time, I think I've talked about this uh, a little over a year ago, where I drove up in the station, I'm pumping gas. A, a, a man and a woman drive up to the pump. The guy's laid back in the seat playing with the radio, and the girl gets out pumping the gas. Oh, my goodness. This day is changing. This day is different. See, when we look at this, Paul then gave us a picture of how to carry these things out. In verse 5, he says, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus had. We should have that towards one another, whether it be towards our wives, whether it be towards uh, uh, our husbands, whether it be towards our co-workers, whether it be towards family members, and also church members. Church members. Church members. Are we here today? Ephesians 5.21 says, submitting one to another as unto the Lord. Submitting one to another. And right after that, that's where it talks about wives. But it looks like in the church, we got to submit one to another, right? That's what the Bible says. I mean, I'm just giving you the word of God here. I'm just telling you what God's word says. So the first mindset that Paul is encouraging us to adapt is a sacrifice. Sacrifice is the first thing he says here. He says, so then in verse 8, he pointed out that Jesus thought he was God, and though he was God, he did not think of himself equally with God as something that he was going to hold tightly to. I'm God. You better follow what I tell you to do. No, no, no. Jesus sacrificed his position for the assignment of God. He gave that position up, but instead Jesus gave up a divine privilege on that position, in that position rather. He sacrificed. So when we think about Jesus, he had the perfect setup in heaven because Jesus wasn't looking at this. He was looking at his heavenly home in glory, knowing what was awaiting him. And sometimes we get stuck right here to what these eyes see rather than the spiritual eyes of what's in glory. We can't get stuck here if we submit ourselves. You know, I look at uh, 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 Asian people and they always greet you with a bow. A bow of submission as a way of showing you respect. That is a way of showing we need to bow to Jesus every time we get a chance. You know, sometimes we need to get deeper and know the word of God. It's not just one hour Wednesday and one hour Sunday, but it's during the week. What are you doing? Are you feeding on the word of God? Do we eat once or twice a week a dinner or a regular meal? No. We eat breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then have a snack in there, and then we throw some other little foods in there. And then, oh, you, you, you got to have your ice cream sandwich. Then you got, oh, wait a minute, I see some cookies. We feed on food all the time, but we need to know the Word of God to know how this should work. If we know God's Word, we will be able to know how to submit. 
I know faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can listen to it too, but we need to study it for ourselves. That is why Paul told Timothy, Timothy, study to show yourself approved, not unto man, but unto God. And we need to get deep in that word as often as possible. We need to be tearing these pages out and just eating them. Eating them. Funeral here yesterday, uh, one of the, the pastors got up and said, yeah, well, the deceased always told me, I'm going to give you a Bible here. I want you to tear every page you can out and eat it. And he knew what she meant. He wanted, she wanted, she said, study, pastor, study so that you can teach us something, so that you can teach yourself something. And that's the way I see it. It's not just for you, but it's for me. When I get in here, I know the responsibility is to present a word that's not faulty doctrine. And in order for us to bring forth the word, when we meet somebody out there, we got to know what to say. When somebody's lost, when somebody's hurting, when somebody needs some healing, we got to know where to turn to give them a word. We can't just go off the top of our head, but we've got to have the mindset of Christ a Christ-like humility. I like this right here. Uh, 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 Jesus knew. He knew what he was looking for. He gave up his position. He knew that there was no pain, no sorrow. There was no difficulty. And the angels everywhere was worshiping him. And he knew what it was like in glory. And the same thing with us, folks. We have a heavenly home, but God wants us to get things straightened out here. And we got to keep striving. We keep striving. We'll never reach that point in this life, but we can't stop. We've got to keep going forward and studying and knowing how to have that Christ-like humility. And the question that is posed today is, who wants to be like Christ? Who wants to be like Christ? I don't see any hands. Maybe nobody want to be like Christ. But if we want to be like Christ, we must develop that Christ-like humility. Humble ourselves. When somebody uh, cuts you off, don't react real quick. Uh, who does he think he is or she thinks she is? Uh, speed up beside of them, give them a mean look, and then keep them fingers in the car. Don't be putting no fingers out the car. I'm talking about pull over one finger or the other finger next to it. It might be your church member. You pull up, hey, sis oh, Sister Jenkins, what would you do? I'm going to go tell the pastor. And if they tell me, I'm going to say something. I'm going to call you out. I'm going to call you down front, and we're going to have prayer. We're going to get a whole bottle of oil, 30 way. Might even get a bucket of oil. Anyway, let's keep it moving here. Humility, Christ-like humility. We have got to be willing to sacrifice. Sacrifice, sacrifice everything to God. That is, our time, our talent, our treasures, everything should be sacrificed to God. Everything that belongs to God should be given to him, including us. Our time, whatever it is, should be given to God. See, the gospel should be shared with the lost. If God told us to go and talk, we don't have to just get up every morning and go. But when we're in the store, when we're getting our car fixed or something like that, we don't, well, it's okay to talk about the game, but turn it into the game that Jesus won. You know, the big game Jesus won. And, oh, you know what else? That big game, the Rams and the Rockets. Oh, no, they don't play each other. They don't play each other. People looking at me like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. I know the Rockets is a football team. Just kidding. Just kidding. I'm checking. <laughs> I'm checking. I see some heads kind of look like you, you, you better shut up right now on the sports stuff. I know the Rockets is hockey. Anyway, the point is, is a Christ-like humility is what I'm getting at today. And again, it's putting God's will before myself, thinking of what God wants me to do. Only what we do for Christ is going to last in this day and time. Only what we do to be a servant. Uh, Jesus Christ 
took the form of a servant. He took the position of a slave. And that means that Jesus was talking, um, excuse me, taking steps downward from his position. He was demonstrating. God had to say, you know what? They don't get it right. Uh, 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 Noah, Abraham, all of them keep. Let me wrap myself in the flesh and come down and show them how it's done. And in the meantime, I'm going to go through all this. And I'm going to make sure I fulfill the Old Testament. Show them that the devil can't beat me. And then in the meantime, I'm going to do it all for them. And that's what he did for us. He fulfilled something that no man could ever do. He never sinned. Not one time. And he did it for you and me. He took on that low level for you and me. And we need to develop that Christ-like Humility. Jesus was serving people. He was washing folks' feet. He was feeding people. He was also uh, 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 raising people from the dead. Jesus was teaching people. He was healing folk. He was even taking time to do miracles. When folk, when he was on his way somewhere, he was crowded in. They even dropped one of their buddies through the roof of the church, and he took time to even heal him. Jesus was showing us how it's done. He took time out there. The idea is that the church is fine. It's a building, but we are the church to take the church to the world, to reach folk, bring them into the fold. Not just the fold of the church, but bring them into the circle, bring them into the body of Christ, ministering and witnessing the folks. And here's the question we could ask ourselves. Do I find myself being served, or do I find myself serving others? That's the question we can ask ourselves. And the best person we could change is that person we look at in the mirror. And every time I get in that mirror, I always say, Lord, I know that man right there needs to be changed. He needs to be shaped. And I ask you to keep shaping him. I just want to do your will that man right there in the mirror. You remember Michael Jackson? I'm talking about the man in the mirror. That's the one we, we, we've got to work on. And so again, how much are we willing to, to have to develop that Christ-like humility? And we can ask ourselves this question also. Do I look at a task and say, oh, I'm too, I'm too above that? Or do we do whatever it takes to make sure that task is done? All of us have to look at it that way. All of us. It takes a team to win a game. I was watching a game one day, and it was years ago. And I was looking at this team. I ain't going to say what team it was because you're going to say that's a – well, it was a basketball team. And one player was basically shooting the ball. I was like – now, wait a minute. It's four on him, and he's still trying to shoot the ball, and the players is all open, and he's shooting way at the three-point line, and the ball's bricking and everything else. I'm like, now, come on. It's a team. When you pass the ball around and play it in a teamwork fashion, you win games. You win games. You don't hold on to the ball, but you share it. See, and we got to look at the fact There's another point Paul explains to us here, what we need to do. And if we want to have that Christ-like humility, it is to be submissive. Submissive, that's another one. Looking at Christ who humbled himself in obedience to God. Verse 8 clearly shows us that Jesus was submissive unto death. Again, Jesus was just as much God as he was a man. But the thing is, he took on that form of a servant, submitted as a servant to do the will of God. Do I have that submissiveness? Do I have it? Do I have that? We must be willing to suffer. We must be willing to do all the things that God has called us. And it's not hard. It seems hard, but we can do it because repetition makes it easy. It was a thing. We went to a weekend fast, Dorcas and I, and, 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 and the leader of this big group was saying this song. He says, in order to remember how to keep doing something, you've got to put this song together, repetition. 
becomes easy, often, often make it a habit. We made a song out of it, repetition, easy, easy, often, often habit. Repetition, easy, easy, often, often becomes a habit. And when we do that, we can learn how to be uh, submissive to God's will, give in to God's will. Are you willing to be submissive to God? Are you willing to sacrifice? Are you willing to serve? Are you willing to submit? And one of the last things that Jesus talks about is suffer. Jesus suffered. And again, in this verse, it says, suffered unto death. He suffered all the way to the cross. They beat him. They spit on him. They kicked him. They did everything there was. They punched him. You name it, they did it. But he did it unto the cross. Here we have God in the flesh taking this on for you and me, giving us the example of Christ-like humility. And here's what I want you to do. Be willing to submit. Be willing to sacrifice. Be willing to suffer. And know that God is there. And what happened with Jesus? The blessing was, was he was placed right on the right hand of the Father. He had a seat right there on the right hand of the Father. And he tells us to follow him. And he also tells us in his word, without me, you can do nothing. We need Jesus. So let's follow his example. Let's do as he did. If we follow Jesus' example, there's a great blessing for us. We are humble. If we are humble like Christ, the humility that we demonstrate leads us right into that blessing in due time. Let us thrive and strive to do what we can to be humble like Christ, have that Christ-like humility. God bless you. God keep you. Give the Lord a hand. Praise. The gospel has gone out to your ears and to your heart and to your mind. And we have a charge. And the charge is to go out to a dying world. We all humbled ourselves and we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior because Jesus humbled himself even to death on the cross. And so today, you can put away that pride, and you can humble yourself and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Humble yourself. When you humble yourself and give yourself to the Lord, you identify with Jesus' death and his resurrection. And what is the prize? Eternal life. Is there one today? Put away that pride. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The time is now. Tomorrow is not promised for your life. Any, uh, any one of us may see death before the sun goes down and before the sun rises. Nothing is promised. Today is the day of salvation. Right now is the day of salvation. Is there one? And if there is one that is looking for a church home, you've been looking for a long time, Central Baptist is the place for you where you can grow, be discipled, and be surrounded by those who love you other believers we are embracing you now is there one that would like to join Central Baptist Church today is the day let us bow our heads for prayer dear Lord God we thank you today for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard the gospel the pure gospel and we thank you, Lord God, that some way that we know the gospel, that we can go out during the week 
Monday through Saturday, or even today, Sunday, and tell others about the gospel, about how Jesus humbled himself, became a servant, and died on the cross. But the prize was great because he's now sitting at the right hand of the Father, King of King and Lord of Lords. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you've done for us and all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen.